In 2007, the Town Commission of Lauderdale-by-the-Sea in Broward County, Florida, unanimously approved an artificial reef using bio-rock technology to be constructed. Spearheaded by Dan and Stephanie Clark of the non-profit organization Cry of the Water and championed by former Town Commissioner Mark Firth, this project would be the first coral restoration project using bio-rock technology in the United States and the only one in the world using solar-powered buoys. The goal of the project was to create a world-class coral reef community and tropical fish habitat for the town of Lauderdale-by-the-Sea. The BioRock technology and project construction would be provided by Global Coral Reef Alliance under the leadership of President Dr. Tom Garreau, the former Senior Scientific Affairs Officer at the United Nations Centre for Science and Technology for Development. Global Coral Reef Alliance is a non-profit organisation that consists of volunteer scientists, environmentalists, divers and other like-minded organisations that are dedicated to growing, restoring, protecting and managing coral reef ecosystems. Global Coral Reef Alliance entered into contract with the town of Lauderdale-by-the-Sea in 2007 to begin work on the coral reef fisheries and restoration project. In 2010, Bonnie Research was brought on board to assist with the installation, maintenance and monitoring of the artificial reef. Bonnie Research of Pompano Beach, Florida is a non-profit organisation comprised of highly skilled volunteer scuba divers that work together to ensure conservation and preservation of Florida's oceanic resources. Bonnie Research was founded in 1989 by President Stephen Attis, whose passion is diving to make a difference. The BioRock technology mimics the natural growth of coral reefs and was invented by a pioneering architect, the late Professor Wolf Hilberts, in the 1970s as a way of growing natural building materials in the sea. In the 1980s, Professor Hilberts began working with Dr. Tom Garreau, a preeminent coral reef specialist, to use the BioRock process to restore coral reefs. Since then, hundreds of BioRock coral reef restoration projects have been built in more than 20 countries. As a result, BioRock reefs have kept corals alive in places where they would have perished and allowed new reefs to be grown back in a few years in damaged areas. Two yellow buoys mark the location of the BioRock artificial reef project, which is located just off the Datura Avenue portal, a popular public beach access for snorkeling and diving south of the fishing pier at the end of Commercial Boulevard in Lauderdale by the sea. After securing all the permits and approvals needed from multiple local, county, state and federal agencies, installation of the BioRock artificial reef project began on September 3, 2011. Once the Vonnie research vessel was on site, six rebar structures weighing 90 pounds each and measuring six feet in length and four feet in width were lowered into the water. Lift bags were utilized to assist the divers in positioning the rebar structures on the ocean floor. Three structures in a northern location and three in a southern location a short distance away. The rebar structures were placed end to end to increase their stability. Drilling holes in the sea bottom for the legs of the rebar proved to be a challenge. A 3 8 inch air powered drill was used first but was insufficient. Switching to a half inch air powered impact wrench with a drill attachment worked well. Each one inch hole was drilled approximately 14 inches into the substrate. Two anodes with titanium cores are utilized in the BioRock project, one in the north structure and one in the south structure. Just like a battery, a solar cell has two terminals that need to be connected for current to flow through a circuit. The anode is the positive terminal and the rebar metal is the negative terminal and a trickle electrical current flows through the water between them. With the BioRock technology, the seawater is the conductor that allows the electrical current to flow from one terminal to the other. When the wiring was hooked up, it was amazing to witness calcium carbonate forming almost immediately on the metal surfaces of the rebar structures. 
Portland cement was used to permanently attach the metal structures to the sea floor. Prior to cementing and to ensure good bonding, compressed air was used to blow out any debris that had settled into the pre-drilled holes. In accordance with the permits issued for the project, both BioRock reef structures and four reference sites are required to be monitored on a monthly and then quarterly basis. The reference sites are 6 by 6 feet squares located adjacent to the north structure and 15, 30 and 60 feet away. This was accomplished by building a movable 6 foot PVC square divided into four quadrants. Three datums were placed into the ocean floor, one in the centre and two in corner points to ensure accurate positioning for the monitoring requirements. Pilot holes were drilled into the substrate and then an air-powered impact wrench was utilised to screw the lag into the substrate. The original buoy design had raised solar panels to allow for waves to safely pass over the buoy and under the solar panels. Vonnie Research invited local high school students to participate in the BioRock project to ensure that the younger generation would learn stewardship in protecting oceanic resources. Once the first buoy was attached to the rear of the research vessel, it was ready for deployment. On September 18, 2011, the first buoy was deployed, but the deployment operation proved to be no small task. By the end of September 2011, both of the BioRock reef structures were under full power, but this operational success was short-lived. On October 7, 2011, the south buoy flipped over in rough seas. The Vonnie Research diving team immediately sprung into action to right the overturned buoy. Extra mooring lines were added to secure the system. In the days that followed, the seas continued to build and both solar panels were destroyed. The original buoy design had failed. On October 11, 2011, when it was safe to enter the ocean, Vonnie Research organised a beach dive assisted by the Lauderdale by the Sea Volunteer Fire Department to bring both buoys ashore and to search for any debris from the solar panels. Vonnie Research divers were happy to report that there was no damage to the reef from the solar panel destruction. An engineering team led by the Vice President of Vonnie Research, the late Dr Ray McAllister, examined the flawed buoy design and came up with several enhancements to make the system more durable and stable in the ocean. A solid stainless steel box with a Lexan polycarbonate cover was designed to house and protect the solar panel. The entire assembly was lowered to sit directly atop the buoy at a slight angle to lower the centre of gravity. The counterweight was lowered two feet to increase the stability of the buoys in the water. The newly designed south buoy was redeployed on December 18, 2011 and the north buoy on January 2, 2012. To strengthen the mooring system, all of the mooring lines were increased to one inch diameter. Bonnie research divers noticed that the project wiring appeared to have been cut, therefore a decision was made to protect the wiring by running it inside a two-ply hose. When Hurricane Isaac was threatening the shores of South Florida, a decision was made to remove the buoys for safekeeping. The removal operation was completed under dangerous ocean conditions. Bonnie research divers were again assisted by the Lauderdale by the Sea Volunteer Fire Department. Both buoys were refitted and redeployed in September 2012. On October 14, 2012, Vonnie Research volunteers recovered the south buoy from the beach. Rough waves had caused the two-inch stainless steel pipe that connects the buoy to the counterweight to snap in half. As a result, the buoy broke free from its mooring. The solar panel was still functioning due to the newly designed stainless steel protective box. In preparation for Hurricane Sandy, the Lauderdale by the Sea Volunteer Fire Department once again assisted Vonnie Research divers in bringing the North Buoy ashore for safekeeping. 
After careful review, the Vonny Research Engineering team realised that the bottom half of the buoy system needed to be redesigned. There was too much stress on the main shaft and the moment needed to be reduced. A decision was made to strengthen the mooring system by doubling the thickness of the main shaft and raising the anchoring points to just below the buoy. The size and thickness of the four anchoring points were also increased. This new design would allow the buoy to better handle large waves. On December 19, 2012, both retrofitted buoys were simultaneously redeployed. The buoys have been fully functional and the reef rebar structures under continuous power since Christmas Eve 2012. A special activity license for the coral transplantation to the BioRock project was issued by the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission commencing in January 2013. 100 corals of opportunity, which are defined as unattached, broken coral fragments lying on the sea floor, were approved to be harvested, transported and attached to the electrified rebar structures by trained scuba divers. 12 species of local corals were approved. A strict harvest protocol is followed and all corals are numbered and documented with respect to the name of species, date, time and location of harvest, and size, colour and condition. Harvested corals are attached with soft steel wire. A minimum of four areas of the rebar structure are cleaned of calcium carbonate to expose the bare metal. Conductive wire is wrapped around the rebar structure and then used to secure the coral. The goal is to affix the coral transplants so that they remain stable during surge and tissue abrasion is minimized while speed of attachment is enhanced. An identification number is placed by each coral. The BioRock process is the only coral reef restoration technology that acts to directly increase the pH at the surface of the growing limestone structures and the corals on them, leaving the corals with much more energy for tissue growth, reproduction and resistance to environmental stress. Bonnie Research divers conduct regular physical and biological monitoring of the BioRock project. Physical monitoring includes routine checking of the structural integrity and operational status of all project components. Caliper measurements are taken of the limestone accretion on the metal rebar structures on a regular basis. The biological monitoring involves high-definition videography and photography of the structures and all marine organisms that have spontaneously settled on or beneath the artificial reef as well as the corals that have been transplanted. Fish surveys are conducted by a Reef Level 4 expert fish surveyor who records size, species and abundance of the fish within the structures and control sites. Over 60 species of fish have been surveyed in the past year, including a pair of resident grey angelfish who have made the BioRock project their home. Bonnie Research and the Global Coral Reef Alliance would like to extend sincere gratitude to the 50 plus individuals who have volunteered thousands of hours to ensure the success of the BioRock project, affectionately known as The Rock. Come dive the rock in the town of Lauderdale by the sea, the premier snorkeling and diving destination in South Florida, and experience firsthand the thriving and vibrant coral community and fish habitat. While our oceanic resources struggle to survive in the face of mounting odds, without our help and consideration, they may be lost to us forever. Oh.